Let's go! This spring practice coverage breakdown presented by our friends at Pressy Collection and PressyCollection.com. And of course, we're going to be talking about the quarterbacks because during our last spring practice breakdown, there was a pretty intense debate regarding Miles Brennan, but, 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 Brennan, 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 Miles Brennan and Jaden Daniels. So uh, we'll get back to the quarterbacks in just a second. So this footage here via Dandy Dawn, and this is uh, Ali Gay going up against what looks to be a walk-on lineman, number 53. And now we have Xavier Hill going up against uh, Makai Wingo, obviously Jamar Kane and Brad Davis in the background. Uh, yeah, this is a good, I mean, Xavier Hill has been really good in this drill. He was able to turn Makai Wingo there. Obviously, this is just uh, a fit drill. Like, you're just going head up. It's not a, like, normally you see in the offseason at these camps, a pass rushing drill. That's not what that was. It was just them going head up. And now you have uh, some coverage drills here with defensive backs coach Kerry Cooks, uh, Joe Big Play Fuster right there, and Matthew Langlois with Jay Ward as this safety battle begins to heat up. So obviously as more scrimmages happen, you're going to get a better look at the defensive backfield. Early on it was Matthew Langlois getting some runs with the ones and Obviously, Jay Ward is such a fascinating prospect. Is he going to move back, or is he going to stay at safety? Is he going to move back to corner and nickel? And we're also here going to talk a little bit about the defensive backfield uh, in terms of a potential addition. Brian Polian, uh, LSU special teams coordinator and one of the recruiting coordinators, said LSU was certainly still in the market for getting another defensive back out of the transfer portal. As promised, you get more quarterback action here. And essentially, first thing is you look at the offensive line here. It looks to be Marcus Dumerville, Cardell Thomas, Fitzgerald West, Tremont Shorts, um, and number 53 at left tackle. I believe that's a walk-on. And you do see Kyron Lacey. You do see uh, Cole Taylor out there as well. And look, uh, for me, this drill is one of the more important drills you get as an offensive player with no defense because obviously when you're working on the two-minute drill you're working on just hurrying up getting to the line of scrimmage getting the ball spotted that's Armani Goodwin making that catch right there so very interesting and the two-minute drill here uh continues you've seen a lot of number 53 uh in this video thus far and he doesn't even have a photo yet on LSU's website it's Brian Balestra 64311 freshman so very interesting. So those two-minute drills are very important just to get uh, out of Jesuit High School in New Orleans. Uh, those two-minute drills are very important just to get rhythm going offensively. Typical wide receiver drills uh, right here. One thing, uh, if you're not familiar with football practice, one item that is used a lot are these hula hoops or these, uh, these circles, whatever you want to call it. And they're oftentimes used uh, for defensive linemen working on bending the edge here they're being used uh for the wide receiver group and you'll see here about this midway through you notice a lot of walk-ons in this drill and part of it is that LSU is going to take it easy with a lot of their more experienced players obviously you know LSU's best player Kayshawn Butte is not going to be in spring football at all so that's why you see a lot of walk-ons up to this point so those may not actually be uh, the guys next year uh, whatsoever. Uh, here's a few more walk-ons going through this drill right here. So I know it's a little uneventful, but you still do see somebody like B.J. Ojolari, uh, who is more than likely going to be a starter. And this is Desmond Little here working with B.J. Ojolari, who very well could be the backup outside linebacker role, that Jack standing outside linebacker role next year. Uh, for LSU so keep in mind that when you do watch these practice footage breakdowns around this midway point you're going to see a lot of players taking it easy uh, Jaquel and Roy you saw with uh, I've seen him just in drills up to this point wearing that red practice uniform so uh, a little more one-on-ones here uh, this was a rep you just saw a minute ago the only thing here 
Uh, obviously, you know, Wingo's low, but he's getting turned. The only thing I didn't quite understand is why Xavier Hill panicked and put his arm on top of Wingo there. Uh, but other than that, Xavier Hill looks really strong at the point of attack. So this rep was really fun, right? So we get Savian Jones going up against Will Campbell, who's getting runs with the one in this practice, and you see Savian just dominate him. But here's the thing I like about Will Campbell. He's like, I want to do it again. I want to get another rep. Uh, and he's going to get another rep here. And you can hear Brad Davis uh, or just see Brad Davis in the background saying you were too high on that rep. And Will Campbell gets another rep, and now Will's dominating. I'll tell you, this guy has just been, and you don't want to just get too far ahead. This guy has just been nothing short of incredible in these first couple of practices. And the thing I like about Will Campbell is his motor. He just does not stop um, until that whistle blows. Now, yeah, Mason Smith going up against Tremont Shorts, and Mason is just doing Mason things. I did like Tremont Shorts fighting back into this rep, but you could just see, look, look at the explosion Mason just has. Boom. I mean, he has such violent hands uh, and a violent pop at the point of attack. Uh, it's like he's made to play this position. It, it's really, really impressive. Now here we go. Jacoby and Guillory going up against Charles Turner. And... Uh, I mean, yeah, Tur Turner in, in a lot of these drills, strength is not his biggest attribute. Um, but then again, Guillory is just a monster. And, God, this is just nasty. Good finish right here by Kimo. Uh, 42 is a walk-on, uh, but still, you love seeing an offensive lineman bury uh, a defensive lineman anytime. So this is what we were referencing a minute ago, Jacoby and Guillory, I mean Jacoby and Guillory, Jaqueline and Roy here in the red non-contact uniform. When you get to the dead center here spring, uh, teams are just not going to take chances on very key players. And Jaqueline Roy is one of the best players on the team. Now you get to this drill here. Essentially what you're working on is getting off the block and locating the football, right? So... Fend off the block, go find the ball carrier. Very simple stuff, right? And look, if there was a game that was being played today, Jaqueline and Roy would be in the starting lineup ready to go. Just, you want to be very cautious with red non-contact uniforms, even though teams aren't tackling really right now. Uh, you know, you, you just play very, very, very careful. Uh, you just do things very carefully. I do want to uh, show you this in the background. Uh... Offensive linemen working on, you know, once again, their fits. You hear that all the time. Their fits. Once again, it's it's very simple stuff, right? It's still early on the basics of the position, right? This is what it's oftentimes like for a defensive lineman during the game. You got to get off a block, locate the football, see which way he's going, and go make the play. Now we get back here with the quarterbacks. Uh, we, we left you here on this Jaden Daniels rep. And it's still just more of the same, right? Can you get better with your footwork? And obviously a big thing for Jaden next year is pocket awareness, winning the games within the pocket, and working on getting to those second and third level reads. Now, once again, you can't really work on that here. You're just doing individual drills and you're working on your footwork and getting the football out in time. And like we say in all our spring practice videos, unless it's otherwise noted, uh, these videos are going at 0.75 speed. So it is slowed down just a little bit, so it is a little bit easier to talk behind these videos. And here is Miles Brennan. Uh, right now, obviously, it, it's still very early to see who's actually going to be winning this quarterback battle. But Miles is going to have a really good shot at it. And we did share that statistic um in our last video, uh, showing the discrepancies in passing yard per game between Miles Brennan and Jaden Daniels. And if you want to see that stat, uh, the video is floating in the top right corner of your screen, or I'll link it down below. I will say this, so when I when I dug a little bit deeper, uh, I, I did see that Jaden Daniels was still one of the Pac-12's 
best quarterbacks when it comes to yards per attempt. Boom, I'm looking at you. You knew it was coming. <laughs> huh? 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 At the end of this video, I want to talk a little bit more about the defense and potentially where LSU could address some needs in the portal. Now, we touched on this a little bit earlier with uh, seven banks. I do feel this is a very real possibility, and I think a big reason why this could happen is, quite simply put, LSU's two best defensive backs next, da, 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 next year might actually be transfers themselves. Because in the background here, you see a uh, pursuit drill happening where you throw the football, you're just working on pursuit angles and going uh, to make tackles. And right here might actually be your leader of LSU's defense next year. Joe Fouché, Fusha, however you want to pronounce his name. Uh, I've heard both. He might be the guy. He might be the leader. And him and Greg Brooks, the transfers uh, from Arkansas. Here's Joe again. Uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how LSU actually lines up their safeties and their nickel. Don't see Sage Ryan uh, in this drill. That's Derek Davis Jr. Does he live up to that top 100 potential and, and be one of your big-time defensive backs next year? I don't know. But the reason why, as LSU fans, you really want this seven banks thing to happen is because LSU is in dire need of traditional cornerback experience. The outside edge corners, your Patrick Peterson, your Greedy Williams, your Derek Stingley, your Christian Fulton. LSU right now is very thin there. Do you trust Jarek Bernard Converse? Do you trust uh, Makai Wingo to be those two guys? Both of which are also transfers. So why not just add another transfer into this equation? Uh, I, it very well could happen. And what's very interesting about it is, yes, LSU has other players. Jay Ward has some traditional corner experience. A guy like uh, Ray Darius Jones. Jordan Tolls has gotten some reps as that traditional corner as well during the spring. But it would be better to actually get more experience at a very critical position of the defense. So Seven Banks is a guy, and we'll talk more about him uh, during our next live stream. He has college football playoff experience. And yes, he is coming off a pretty bad hip injury. And yes, he was very interested in putting his name into the NFL draft. Well, if he came in right now, he is he, he's going to come in here all business and ready to go. So that should excite you uh, because LSU desperately does need more corner experience. And what a finish in the background here by Marcus Dumerville. So we'll see if that actually does end up happening. But as of right now, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. But I don't want my hopes uh, to get up too much. And then after that, LSU would have two more transfer portal slots remaining hope you enjoyed this video today there will be more videos floating in your face from spring practice breakdowns that we've done and thanks again to our friends at the pressy collection and pressycollection.com it is power hour lsu boom and tonight we're doing some grilled chicken let's go